proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. Ground forms up under his feet as it point in the way. He don't stop to wonder why. Finds his lifelong friend just lying in the road. Well, it's a touching reunion. He sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant in the Calamity. That a survivor? No, ma'am. It's a gas fella, forced out from underground. Kid pops him good. Fella got a piece of him, though. Kid just rages for a while. An old repeater falls out of the sky. Ain't a gift from the gods, but it'll have to do. Gotta hold her still to spin up the chamber. Kid's worked up quite a thirst by now, so that fountain looks real inviting. Sometimes you just need a drink. A school of squirts tunnels up around them. Must have fled here from the mines. He sets foot inside one of Selandia's famous watering holes. Inside's old Rondi, the bartender. The calamity got him for his drinking did. Then Kid finds his trusty shield. But just as he's getting a handle on it, the security takes him for a petty thief. Clang! Shield saves his eye. Windbags start turning up for last call. Squirts start coming out of the woodwork. A big old fella pops out in front of the kid. The kid sees the weight of the bastion out the window. It's a bit of a drop. He gets a good look at things on his way down. He lands on top of a breaker's bow, and it ain't broke. And then, he falls to his death. I'm just fooling.
Kid Spy is a good perch for some target practice. He knows he should draw the string all the way back. Right back at ya. Good news is the emergency defenses still work. Bad news is they're aiming for the kid. up a few pointers from a dusty old tome. He's a mighty fast learner. The kid pockets a memento from a breaker, once the fastest man in the land. He finds the distillery, right next to the arsenal. Tough part of town. One sip of the spirits in that distillery, and the kid will feel like a new man. You better watch his step. The arsenal's where the kid can pick the best tools for the job. Some of them squirts birthing like crazy in a couple of court things. That one was Maud, the tutor. Once taught the kid good manners. He never used them, though. An old ferry barge sends the kid on his way. The bastion's real close now.
takes a chunk of alloy. The smell of barley and spoiled blueberries fills the air. Scumbags. Kid maybe shouldn't have done what he just did. City's heart. Might as well. Kid has a feeling you better get a move on. The place is starting to fall. was the only thing making this particular rock stay afloat. Kid just keeps running. to go. Now the kid sees something stranger still. His mind races. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds another. He finds me. We talk for a spell. There's a bit of the Bastion's power in that crest, enough to point the way to the cores. All I tell him is to set that core is on the monument there, then watch. Just like that, the bastion comes alive. Starts growing again, growing stronger. Kid's gotta put its power to good use. Now the bastion can send him even farther into the wild unknown. Kid ponders what to build. Takes time to sample spirits from my personal supply. Squirt cider will toughen you right up. Too bad about the musty aftertaste. Kid don't know what's out there waiting for him. The Skyway. Now the kid can ride the wind to distant lands. The Workman Ward. Them windbags used to keep the city humming along here. 
the Breaker Barracks. Many straight shooters learn their way here. Now he lands at the intersection between bad and wrong. <laughs> Ought to be a core down one of these twisted streets. But which one? He heads for the squirt steps. Won't be no field trip this time. Keeps telling himself he better watch his step. His gun bag can digest just about anything. Except for this, it's quick for slicing and light enough to throw. They say even the most rambunctious squirts can be tame. Squirts don't make the best of friends, but they can be useful in a pinch. No sign of the core here. At least the kid got something for his trouble. Them squirts just don't know when to quit. Heads for the biggest dump in town. Scumbag Alley. Some scumbag still feeding off the city's own trash. And there he is. The oldest scumbag of them all. Gershel. Calamity ain't done much for Gershel's sunny disposition. Shame old Gershel can't float like when he was a young fella. No core, no surprise. Like the gas fellas are hiding it from him. The rest of the path is gone for good. City crest won't bring it back. He heads for the east side, where windbags used to keep the local forge. Somehow that old forge is still standing. Place to find the likes of Percy the Snitch. Never much cared for that big wide grin of his. Inside the forge, Key can fine tune those instruments of his. Kids' lifelong friends looking fit to keep on fighting.
The little Zolwood oil on that blade shines like a light. Core ain't here neither, so he's got to guess again. Up north is where the gas fella foreman used to live, tending to his flock. No white gas fellas all dress alike. Kids wondering the same thing. Almost like he's showboating for the crowd. And now there's a new marshal in town. He hears the whole place groan. But it's too tough to fall. Kid's ready to go, and his ticket out's right where he started. He comes back, just like I knew he would. The core hums in his pack. The monument's calling for it. The windbags used to be all right. Then the calamity took the floor out from under them. Ain't always much to say. Kid does it again. Only fair he decides what we build next. Bastion's a place of peace, but we can hold our own if we have to. A repeater goes with a hammer better than a box of nails. Picked up traces of other cores while the kid was out. In better days, the melting pot was sealed tighter than the skin on the squirt. Of all the plans to survive the calamity, it had to be stab weeds. Blasted things hurt like a broken heart. Huh? <laughs> 
there's a core, he figures it ought to be deeper down. He cuts down every stab weed like there's gonna be a prize for it. Core stuck inside one of those fancy cages. Some of the stuff lying around is downright dangerous. No break in a cage like that, but the kid tries anyway. Gotta find a way to spring it open. He throws a switch. Now what could possibly go wrong? Quite a bit, as it turns out. The cage starts lifting from the core ever so slow. All Kid can do is wait. Shipments start falling in. Not every score is born bad. Some spring to the Kid's defense. Judging by the movement of the cage, it's gonna take a little while. Scumbags don't take kindly to interlopers. Even some gas fellas take his corner. Heard it pop that mean old foreman. At this rate, maybe five more minutes, maybe thirty, hard to tell. Words get real territorial around the core. Then a ship and a free sample shows up. It ain't all bad, as the kid finds some spices from the motherland, tax free. One thing's for sure. That cage is awful heavy. It's a troublesome scene to be sure. Moments left, and the core goes free. Ten, nine, eight, seven, you give or take a few seconds. Finally, the core's within reach. And done. He's got it. Just gotta get to the nearest barge.
I still remember the look on his face after that one. Folks voyaged across the boundless sea to found Ceylandia. It was good living here for a while. <coughs> Fetching fizz is like a mouthful of nails, but the benefits are worth it. The old world's finished, but the new world's just getting started. Fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. Turns out those old bones still have some spark in them. With a good length of meese gut, that bow's like new again. Breakers used to come here for target practice. Used to play a little game. See who could bust the most targets in the fewest shots. He's focused. He's armed. And he's off. Shot just happens in a flash. Kid ain't had enough of the breaker's barracks. He returns with some of the materials we need.
kid packs a special surprise in every one of those arrows. I almost don't believe it when he says he passed the breaker's challenge. The sundown path. Lovely place for a stroll. Before the calamity, that is. Couples used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure, though. Somebody gets to the core before the kid. The floor starts giving way under the lightest step. A single panic squirt can bring the whole place down. Fragments of the old world rain in the sky. Well, the path ain't exactly open. 
visitors no more. Security is all fired up. Spyglass, like the ones they'd use to search the stars. Air travel always was an iffy proposition. But calamity changed everything, even where the wind blows. to the winds in the old days. We can do it again. But the question is... Quick and careful is the only way to go. Who else could have taken the core? Well, ain't no survivor stole the thing. Scumbag ate it by mistake. Tough break. Unlike the kid, that core ain't coming back. to ship live munitions down the path. Find time to find him. He's wise to toss those things plenty far away. Gas fellas need some shut eye from time to time. They get real cranky when you wake them up. could have survived the calamity. So he didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. Give the little tiger a break. We could always see the stars. We just never could reach them, no matter how high we build.
No place better than Trapper Shingle for learning to tread light and shoot straight. Trappers had to tread real carefully, or else take a nasty fall. They trained themselves by clearing out the targets, while not clearing out the floor. Any good trapper knows never to take a step till the time is right. Expert trappers got something extra to give them an edge. Kid decides to keep working his aim and footwork on the shingle. The best time to pick a new spot was when swapping magazines. To think a rickety place like the shingle survived, and so little else did. That ought to make those fangs sink in nice and deep.
The trappers would have been impressed with how the kid handled the shingle. <laughs> The Hanging Gardens. Folks used to go here to relax from their relaxing. Windbag Ranch was built for gathering squirt extract and copious supply. Ain't nothing more healthful. Some folks showed up to make a fast buck for coming by the night. Still others use the place to test their finest blades. The place gets awful slick sometimes. Cuts all of them down soon enough. Kid comes back from Windbag Ranch, smelling good and ripe. <laughs> The dead welcome him with open arms. The calamity took everybody after all. Kid sees a plain, frozen faces all around. You don't much care to see him. Not like this. These folks never saw the calamity coming. 
but someone did. Someone close. Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. It was someone like him. Kid sees him there again, in the flesh. Can't do nothing to get his attention. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. He's got so many questions after all. Just ain't got time for answers. The Tundra Brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the Bird Boy they didn't make it. The Jawsons, they didn't make it. Grady Sr., Grady Jr., they didn't make it. But him, he survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? The core survived as well. Get this what he has to do. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go, please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. We fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. He was born in the Tazel Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. The cores, they remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. Well, look what we have here. Here, kid takes fragments of the old world and makes them whole again. All it takes is some fragments and the Bastion makes it good as new.
We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. That's Cinderbrick Fort, where the marshals used to watch over the city. There's only one way to Cinderbrick Fort. The hard way. Sure, the city marshals may be gone. But now the fort's crawling with windbags. The calamity was mercy for the normal folks. The windbags ain't so lucky. They've been left to freeze, or starve, or face the kid. Something that'll punch clean through their greasy hides. Windbags ain't much different from normal folks. All they want's a warm place to stay and a decent meal. The calamity drove the windbags topside. A lot of them wound up here in this very fort. Could have been minding the business underground like in the old days. Windbags can't use the martial supplies, but the kids sure can. He stashes the marshal's prize. Goes back to something more his style. Cinderbrick gave him enough heat and metal to munch on for a while. Well, the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame him for wanting it, though. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Not a scratch on him as it presses on the higher ground. Thank you. 
works. Kid ain't afraid to get burned. Trap the kid in the middle of the fort's parade grounds. Then they bring out Glutus and Glandon and all their scumbag uncles. Something to gain, and only their sorry hides to lose. Getting a marshal's badge, but not like this. The skyway's a welcome sight after all that. And now ain't nothing left for nobody down at Cinderbrick Fort. Kid shows up just as Ulf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Seems the only thing the Calamity saved for Zolf was his smoking pipe. Poor kid collapses after just one drag. The past. Only good thing ever come out of the past. Is history. up with a kid. Hardly had a moment's rest since all this started. Fair to say he's led a hard life. Supposing what he says in his sleep ain't no lie. He never knew his old man, but he had his mama to take care of. Frail thing with pure white hair like his. <laughs> Having his mama's hair did the kid no favors while he was growing up but he learned to hold his own out there. Yeah. 
School ain't working out, so the kid signs up for a turn on the rippling walls. Make his mama some money. Thanks to folks like the kid, the walls kept Ceylandia safe from whatever's out there. The elements, the aura, you name it. Once the kid done his time, he hurried on home. Turns out his mama's time was done too. The city had nothing for him. The money he'd been sending home was nowhere to be found, either. So what did the kid do? Why he went right on back to the walls for another five years? In the history of Ceylandia, nobody has ever volunteered for a second shift on the walls. There, a kid learned to fend for himself, learn to build, learn to break. In time, the kid earned good standing with the marshals. They trusted him to scout out farther than anybody. One night, on one of his expeditions, the ground beneath him shuddered, cracked, and split apart. He saw nothing where the world used to be. The calamity happened just like that. All the kid had to work with was his hammer and the clothes on his back. Through twisted streets, 
He ran with nothing but the city crest and an old stranger's voice to guide him. finally arrived at Ceylandia's vaunted safe haven, he and no one else. But then, all he got was more thankless work from a man who ain't even asked his name. Sure, I may be the one who dreamt up the walls and the bastion, but the kid made him real, not me. I'd like to say I'll never forget him, or what he's doing, what he's done. I surely would. The marshals seem like good men, he says. They treated him with dignity. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Even since the Ura surrendered to us, the marshals kept a wary eye on him. If you're feeling low, count on the buttery flavor of our own Bastion bourbon. Zolf's travels ain't much compared to what the kids had to go through for all this. The memorial. Here a kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. The valediction. Just another one of my sketches, nothing more.
Words can't express what happened, but they're all I got. Finders keepers. Now he can shoot that fang repeater all day long. Ain't never letting go of his old friend with a sturdy grip like that. There's Pith Orchard, built in honor of the bull, and folks like Zulf who pray to him. No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Pith Orchard. Places a dead end in more ways than one. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now, and the orchard core is long gone too. Gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. Well, no use turning back just yet. for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. Piff makes a decent scarecrow, at least. Then Piff lights up like a rodeo. Piff breaks him to bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods, or tell them off? Kid decides to press his luck. Well, if the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. The 
kid ain't never seen one bags that quick. Maybe old Biff put a scare in him. found a core, but at least he found Zolf's precious shrine. Now we can build a shrine of our own, though I got some alternatives in mind. Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. I try to let the kid down gently. This is the bastion, all right. Except no one else showed up. The Ura feared the gods. We turned them into toys, put their faces on our walls. The Trappers. Daring bunch of fools. They'll be missed. Machetes are so quick, you gotta keep a good grip on them. You wanna tune a scrap musket, you start with the barrel. The city's unwanted things all met their end in the yard. Folks who fouled up will do their time here, smashing things to bits. The quicker they worked, the sooner they could go. Folks learned to plant their feet and put their backs into it. Others will plot a course to navigate that sea of junk. A good day smashing to feed a family for a week.
Kid pays another visit to the scrapyard for old time's sake. Some folks invested their earnings to forge even better hammers. Ever want to just smash things for a while, you know where to go. That's the Langston River. Used to cut all the way to the wild. Think it was bad then. The Langston River flowed free and wild till the calamity drank it all up. Maybe all that water just grew wings and flew off. Riverbanks swarming with windbags. They're so bent on finding the core, they hardly notice the kid. Lucky for him, a certain famous fairy barge is still afloat. Weeping Lily. She sends some squirts crying home as she leaves port. Maybe Nelly knows the way to the core. Maybe she can slip right past all the clamor on the coast. Or maybe not. The security skiff pulls up portside. Nelly's just another windbag to those guns. Just then, the windbags notice who she's sailing with. Try to cut her off. They try to slow her down. They try to knock her out. Well, Weeping Nelly tries harder. Try as she might, though. She hits a snag. Kids gotta help her get untangled. Favors for favors. Spot for a break, cause the core is right there. <laughs> the 
Then the kid hears an unusual sound, like a hundred flapping wings. Peckers. They had their own eyes on the core. Why? Well, kid ain't got time to think it over just yet. He finds Weepin' Nelly raring to go. Turns out she's got a special surprise for when the waters get rough. She's gonna need a little help with all them peckers. Trafty things think they're king of the roost now. Rest of us only wish we could fly in times like these. Curious gifts keep on coming, starp inside. Don't seem to care what they shoot, as long as they hit something. Good couple of times. Now, listen close. You should remember this next part. Why go to Prosper Bluff? Used to take an enterprising man or a plain old fool to venture out that far. The city was the most beautiful place in the world. We all knew that. But on the other hand, some folks just yearn to see the things they're told they can't. And that's why you go to Prosper Bluff, ain't it? There the kid hears something he ain't heard in a long while. How's it go again? Yeah, that's the one.
Well, no point explaining what happens next, right? Suffice it to say, kid ain't coming home empty-handed. And besides, it's like the song goes. They'll be here before too long. We darn near celebrated when the kid got back, didn't we? Zolf never thought he'd see a fellow her again. We become fast friends. Calamity has that effect on people. But there was more to be done. There was one last core to find. Most of the Ura never got a taste of Ceylandia's fine goods, unless they were born and raised in the city like Zia here. Sure, the world's all gone to pieces farther than the eye can see, but leave it to this gal to point out the amazing view. Girl tried to run away from home one time, but the marshals stopped that, didn't they? So many secrets in there and she can't even read it. Her father's own journal. If only I'd known half the secrets of the Calamity were tucked away in that book, I'd have worked to translate it right away. A scientific journal written in Zolf's native tongue. He learned so much from it. Too much. <laughs> It wasn't fixed, it was unbroken. Kid's surprised when I tell him there's only one core left. I shouldn't have believed it either.
Behold the Pantheon. A Kobe. We track the final core beyond the city to the wilds. That's the edge of the wilds, where Jawson and his boys disappeared. The wild unknown, place can eat a man alive. Place is so raw, even the calamity couldn't cook it. Not all of it. What's better than having a slinger pistol in a fight? Having two. Savage things lurking at every turn. Good thing pin cushions can't see where they're shooting. Kids faster than a slinger with those guns. The wilds drag him down. Pecker's got the core. I think they're a bastion of their own. The welcoming committee scrambles to attention. Didn't expect the kid so soon. They shouldn't have let the guard down. Getting that core was one thing. Getting out's gonna be another. He digs his way out of the clearing, but the wilds won't let him go without a fight. Wallflowers survive the calamity. one's way out in the wilds. Beds take it real slow when pin cushions are afoot. Slinger Jawson's old outpost is all that's left of him. Not by me, by a monkey. 
Lung kids ain't fond of two-legged animals. Hit him anywhere but the hind quarters and he only make him mad. The Calamity must have scrambled their eggs. Hardly any signs of the old Jawson camp. Wild green pineapple's about the only good thing out here. Leave it to the kid to make time for stomping swamp weeds. He's anxious to get back. After all, he's got the final core. His journey's over, right? Well, no. It ain't. Not by a long shot. Kid knows something's up when we ain't there to give a warm welcome. See, Zolf and I were just wrapping up a heated discussion. Zolf can barely muster the words. The calamity failed, he says, but I will not. And with that, Zolf leaves us here, alone. Zolf cursed the city, cursed the bastion, cursed me, said he was going home. When Zolf got through reading that journal, he just snapped, started smashing up the monument till I tried to stop him. Kid must think he's the fastest shot in all the land. He probably is. Takes a lot of moving pieces to make a dependable sidearm. Kid ain't finished here yet. Zolf banged up the monument pretty bad. But there's a way to put her back together. The shards. We're gonna need all of them to nurse the Bastion back to health. The city brought the shards to the wilds. Now the kid's gonna bring them back. The less said about Joss and Bog, the better. That place will eat your mind. Slinger Range is where the city's quickest pistoliers put themselves to the test. You have to think fast to survive the wilds, and not a lot faster than the Slingers. They could shoot their pistols with the speed of a machine.
they knew just when to start shooting and when to stop. Those pistols could spit out rounds just as quick as you could pull the trigger. Learning to hold your fire could be its own challenge. The slingers could plug you full of holes faster than you could say draw. pistols. Eventually it all comes down to reflex. Just cause you're fast don't mean you gotta be reckless. Well, even the slingers weren't quick enough to escape the calamity. Huh? 